A federal appeals court has ruled in favor of putting heavy restrictions on the abortion pill mefeprestone. However, those new limits can't be enforced until the legal process plays out in court. The new restrictions prohibit mail order access, limit its use to the first seven weeks of pregnancy, and require it to be administered only if a doctor is present. The ruling is in limbo until the Supreme Court decides if it will even take up the case. CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson joins us now. Hey there, Jessica. So tell us, how long is this legal process expected to take where the restrictions are not enforceable? Probably a few more months. As you said very clearly, I think the Supreme Court is going to have to decide what to do. When they overturned uh, Roe almost exactly a year ago, they said, basically, we're out of the business of policing these disputes regarding abortion. But here we are with this big legal issue regarding Mifepristone. And so they are on their summer recess, but they can decide which cases to take. And as you said, based on a Supreme Court stay, this Fifth Circuit ruling does not go into effect. It doesn't change the law. So the Supreme Court is going to have to decide do we let this Fifth Circuit ruling stand, which basically means we go back to 2015 before the FDA made it easier to obtain mifepristone in 2016 and then again in 2021? Or do they take up the case potentially with another case out of Washington, Washington state, where that judge made a different decision saying we need to make it easier for people to access mifepristone. Uh, it will be really interesting to see whether or not the Supreme Court wants to wade into this again. Well, and part of the question is, of course, using mefeprestone across state lines. Jessica, what are the potential implications for that? It's, it's such an important question. So there is this question, number one, about whether the FDA was ever correct to approve mefepristone. Number two, whether the changes that it made in 2016 and 2021, as you said, making it easier to obtain mifepristone, saying that you don't have to go to a doctor, you can go to a other, another healthcare prescriber, and that you can obtain mifepristone by, via the mail, whether or not those will stand. And then there's this question about what about mailing mifepristone across state lines and or getting mifepristone in states where that state has outlawed abortion? That sets up a battle between the federal government's power under something called the Commerce Clause to regulate interstate commerce and states' power under something called their police powers to say that we're going to ban abortions. All of that is to say, I can set up the legal battle for you. I think I know what the right answer is, but we have not had a court weigh in and say, yes, the FDA absolutely has this power under the Commerce Clause and no states, you cannot interfere with that power, even though you have broad so-called police powers to ban abortions. Jessica, let's drill down on one of those issues, which is the FDA's approval and whether it was safe, whether it was right to do so. Uh, obviously, there's a long history of mefeprestone being used in the United States, uh, but then there's also a political consideration, which is at the heart of all of this. And Senator Josh Hawley's wife is actually one of the plaintiffs in this. It's a political issue, and I'm wondering if that impacts this case in a way that goes beyond the questions of legality, of science, of FDA regulations. How does all of that impact what's happening right now? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is a huge political question. Obviously, there are very high-profile people, including Senator Hawley's spouse, who are involved in this case. And it is so much of a question of mixed politics in the law. If you look just at the law, I would say this is actually a pretty easy case. And let's remember that this isn't just about mifepristone. This is about the power of the FDA to approve of drugs, to have a safety record for decades and for people, including pharmaceutical companies and users of pharmaceuticals, to be able to rely on that approval process. But what we have here is one of the most politically charged questions really of our time. And so is that complicating this? I think the answer is inescapably Yes, it is. That this is different from the approval of cholesterol medication or blood pressure medication. Now, should that pervade our legal reasoning? Excuse me, it shouldn't, but I think here it probably does.
All right, Jessica Levinson, thank you for joining us. Thank you.